I was at a meeting a couple of weeks ago, and this gentleman, uh, he lives in Tasmania, and he was sharing, and he told this story, which sort of really, really affected me and touched me very, very deeply. And he said that this man wanted to evangelize, wanted to reach out, and so he went to the hospital where he would go on a, I think, on a weekly basis. I don't know how many times a week he went. But he'd go to the hospital and he would share the gospel. And he did it for seven years, not seeing one person get saved or touched by God. But he kept on going and kept on going and kept on going for seven years. And I thought, as I was listening to this story, I'm thinking, my goodness. But a lady, there was a wealthy lady, and she came from another country, and she could not get the medical attention that she needed where she lived. And so she came to this hospital for a treatment. And of course, in this man's custom, as he goes there and he starts to, and he sees this lady and he goes over and he starts sharing the gospel with her. She got gloriously saved, the first person in seven years. As he laid hands on her, she also got amazingly healed. And for the next two or three days while she was in that hospital and before they realized that she was, had nothing wrong with her, he just started to share the gospel with her. And she said to him, she said, well, I've got to go back home. And she said, what will I do? He said, pray, sing a little bit, sing to, pray to Jesus, sing songs to Jesus, and tell people what you've seen and heard. After two years, this woman contacted this man and said, would you please come to my country? Would you please come to my house? Would you please come and see me? He said, oh, lady. He said, I don't know about that. He said, she said, no, please, you must come. And so the man said, okay, with persistence. So he went. She picked him up from the airport and she said, I've got some people that are wanting to hear from you. And as he got to this person's house. She ha she'd had a field. And he said, in this field was over 30,000 people. Between 20 and 30,000 people. And he said, what have you done? What is going on? What did you do? She said, I prayed to Jesus. I sang songs to Jesus. And I told them what I've seen and what I've heard. Within the next three years, over 100,000 people gathered in that field. I want to say to your friends, never give up. Never give up. Only believe all things are possible. In Acts 4.20, the disciples said this. It says, for we cannot but speak the things that we have seen and that we have heard. You know, friends, we don't have to have perhaps great doctrines and great theologies and, and even great insight. This lady was saved for three days before she went home. And what she did was she went and she just told people what she'd seen and heard. She started telling people how God had healed her. Has anybody here ever been healed? Come on, raise your hands. That's what people want to hear about. They don't want to necessarily want to hear that they're going to hell. They want to know the things that Jesus can do for them, amen, and, and what it's like. And, you know, I, it's just an amazing thing what God can do. And I want to encourage you because a lot of times we seek things or we're, we're looking for things and we're, we're sort of, Wait, waiting for something perhaps to happen to us that's already happened and it's already in you. Today, uh, I don't know where my girl's gone, but she's gone, but she was supposed to be here. But today, Nancy and I are celebrating 40 years of ministry. Today, <laughs> to, to, today is... 40 years since we started the Wombai Church as, as senior pastors. We were two years in the children, or two or three years in the children's church. But as I just ponder, and I was talking to Keith and, and his beautiful wife there, uh, and 38 years, 
You've been saved now, got saved there in Wombai 38 years ago. Lives have been changed. They're doing so much. Tonight, I'm going up to, uh, going down rather to North Lakes. I'm going to preach for Andrew Cook. Andrew is celebrating today his 37th year of salvation. He got saved on our third birthday at Wombay. Amen. So I think it's a significant thing that we're going to go up there today and be with him and we're going to minister the word of God there and just believe God. But I, I believe, friends, that, that God, I believe, is wanting to stir us. We've got wonderful presence of God and we come and enjoy it every week. But I, I believe that God wants to expand us. Amen? You believe that? And so go out and tell people what you've seen and what you've heard. Amen. Go out and, and tell somebody the good things that God has done for you. So, Father, we just come to you today and, and we do ask you that you will speak to our hearts today and, Lord, encourage us and, and even challenge us that, that we might be able to go out and, and, and speak to somebody and just share the things that we've seen, the things that we've heard, how we've been touched, how we've been healed, how we've been delivered, how we've been set free ourselves. And, Lord, just invite them to come to that wonderful table that you've set before them in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. I want to just share this morning, and I make no apology for this because I, I believe that it's very, very important. This is something that I spoke not all that long ago. But I believe that, I believe anyhow, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. But you know, if we can understand this, that it's not just hearing because our natural mind can conceive something. Our natural mind can hear something. But friend, we're not just to hear from the natural. I believe that God wants us to hear something on the inside, in our spirit. Amen. And I believe that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing what the Spirit of God is saying, hearing what God's saying to us. And I believe that there's a challenge that's going out to every believer that we would begin to rise, and we begin to move, and begin to go out, and, and even lay hands on sick people. This man for seven years never saw any fruit. But I want to tell you, I don't know any too many people that as a result of what he did, over 100,000 people got touched by the Spirit of God. Amen. I'd love that to be my testimony. Amen. So let's just believe God and, and uh, just let the Spirit of God challenge us again today. I, I want to share this with you. Dwelling inside you right now is the built-in God-created substance it's all you ever need to do everything that God ever requires of you. It's already in you now. When you got born again, and this man this, that's, that, that touched that woman, that got touched by God, that what was in her that she took back over there, but it wasn't just that she took it back. She started to share what she'd seen and what she'd heard. You see, you can have everything that you need to cause a great revival in your suburb, in your street, or in, 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 on the Sunshine Coast even, but unless you allow that Spirit to, of God inside you, unless you realize that all that you ever need is already in you now, uh, we, we're still searching for something, we're still looking for something, we're looking for the dab, we're looking for the this, we're looking for the prophetic, we're looking for something, Thing that, that holds us back. But I want to say to you today, everything that you need is in you now. You don't have to wait another second. You don't have to wait another minute. Just grab a hold of what God has done for you right now. It's in you right now. This thing that we have is called faith. Now, faith is a, is a word that the that church has destroyed, I believe. Because faith in many people's mind is, is becoming multimillionaire. Faith is having a, a house with a lift in it. Faith is having the greatest car. Faith, because, friend, that is not necessary faith. I'm not going against those things. You can have whatever you want. But faith is something very, very different. Faith is simply believing. Faith is simply trusting. It, it's, a, it's a very interesting word. But faith is in you now. You have faith now. It's in you right now, this thing called faith. It says in Hebrews 11 verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance, or faith is the realization 
of things hoped for, the manifestation, the, the, the appearance of, the, the, the fullness of things that you hope for. You've got to have substance in there. You've got to have a realization that you can have it. Of things hoped for, the evidence or the confidence, having confidence of things not seen. I honestly believe that there's got to come something on the inside of us that will cause us to rise up and not be moved by what we see, but be moved by the supernatural power of God that tells us that we can break through, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, and not just allow the status quo, whatever it might be that gets around our lives, but rise up and speak the word of God and see things happening. We heard at communion there where the people were saying that, you know, don't you care that we're perishing? But Jesus stood up. Why? Because he had a confidence, because he had an assurance, because he knew. And he didn't have to shout at it. He didn't have to scream at it. And I love that word that Rob said there. He just said, hush. And I'll tell you, friends, there's a you and I, as people of God, have got to start telling the enemy to hush. We've got to start saying, hush, be quiet. And the Bible tells us that immediately the wind ceased. Because Jesus had a confidence. He had an assurance. All you need to achieve God's purpose in your life is in you right now. I want to say this over and over and over and over. We have it now. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, we have it right now. But you see, there's something there that this man carried that was dynamic. He had obviously an anointing on his life. And when he said those words to that woman, it was the anointing that touched something on the inside of her. That faith, that assurance, that confidence, that, that something there that, that touched her because she had been born again. We've just, I just watched a little bit of a video clip of the kids that got baptized in water the other couple of weeks ago. And many of them, as they, as they stood and as they shared, they said, I feel clean. I feel touched. One young girl said, I feel like I've been born again. One girl said, I felt warmth all over me. Friend, I want to tell you, this thing that we're talking about, salvation, is not a figment of our imagination. It is more real than anything else. It is just as real as the day you got born in the natural. It is more real than anything else you could ever imagine or think. When you get born again, it's not just joining a club. It is a supernatural experience where you walk out of darkness and you walk into light. I want to tell you, friends, I believe that God has taken us out of one kingdom and taken us into another kingdom. And if we had a total revelation of this kingdom that Jesus has taken us into, I want to tell you that this kingdom that Jesus has taken us into, there is no sickness, there is no disease, there is no flu, there is no suffering. It is a kingdom. But unfortunately, church, we've been talked and we don't know what kingdom we're in. And we live in both kingdoms. We come to church on Sunday and we come in and we're worship but unfortunately we go home and then we live in this other kingdom where we're just trying to keep up with the Joneses and be this and that friend we've got to be heavenly minded every moment of the day we've got to be so conscious that we are born again hallelujah and live in the kingdom of God I think that's where the shout <laughs> there's no sickness there's no disease Oh, yes, yeah, sometimes we can live in that kingdom and then you slip away a bit because circumstances, situations, pressure gets around your life and you forget. Lest we forget, amen. This, um, this amazing anointing, God's anointed word, the anointed as people, as the, as the anointing goes forth, it will touch something. Only God's anointed word can and will stimulate God's purpose for your life. What an amazing thing. I want to tell a little bit of a story if I can. I've told this story many times that I, 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 I've just been meditating on it and, and it's, and it's sort of, there's a fresh surge going on on the inside of me. 
I remember I was a, I was a builder. I, I had plans of what I was going to do. I was in a meeting when, when they made a, a, a request for people. Would, they, would you please, uh, somebody come and help us to, to look after a children's camp? I'd never volunteered. I'd never offered myself. I was so self-centered. I was, so, I, I was just a, a builder that wanted to make money so I could live and have fun. When I raised up enough money, I'd go for a holiday. I'd do something. I'd buy something. I lived for myself. Yes, I was saved, but I was living in this kingdom and I wasn't living in this kingdom. I only knew this kingdom. I didn't understand that kingdom. But I want to tell you, friends, God, God, God has got a plan for your life. And if you allow him, and if you make room for him, he will change your direction. And I remember as I put my hand up and I thought, oh, I'll give you a couple of days. Little did I know that that was going to change my life forever. I went there, you know, oh, okay, I'll, I'll do this. And as you know, as I told the story many times, they gave me the job of peeling the potato and the pumpkin. And I had to go out of an afternoon and play games with the kids. I used to watch as I was peeling this potato, the spuds and the, and the pumpkin and things like that. I was watching the teachers as they were teaching the kids. It didn't really worry me because, you know, I was just going to give them a bit of time anyhow. But there's one thing that we did as of an evening. We'd go out and pray under the stars. It wasn't the first night I went out there and I prayed with the people. Second night I went out and prayed with the people. That's most probably some of the first times I've really even gone out to pray. Oh, yes, I was in the church. I was part of the church. But now here I am and I'm praying. And these people are praying and I'm watching the kids and I'm praying and I'm asking Jesus. Wasn't the second night, wasn't the third night, most probably the fourth night. And I'm out, out there under the stars and I'm, I'm lifting up my hands and all of a sudden, it's the Spirit of God. Friend, I want to tell you, it's only the Spirit of God that can stimulate that substance that's on the inside of you. I might have been living for myself. I might have been living out here. I might have been living so far away from my purpose and my plan that God had for my life. But I want to tell you, that which I needed was already on the inside of me. All it needed was a touch of the Holy Ghost fire. And it's inside of every one of us. You may not be living it right now, but I want to tell you, it's in you now. You just need that touch. And I remember as I was praying out there and the Holy Ghost came down. The Spirit of God came down. I, I can feel it today. Man, I've been sitting there just meditating on it and it's like as if it was yesterday and it would be some 45 more years ago. I can feel the same presence. I can feel the same touch. I can feel it like as if it was now. As the Spirit of God came down upon me and it started to touch me in an amazing way. My eyes filled with tears. My heart was changed. I just wanted God. I didn't know what. I didn't know where. I didn't know anything. It just came down all over me. And I went back to my room and everything like that and I slept and the next morning I got up and peeled the spuds again. Those kids ate a lot of spuds that weekend. <laughs> Cut the pumpkin. The lady who was in the kitchen with me was a godly lady. When, the kids, when they'd finished their teaching, I went out there again to play sport with the kids. We played sport with the kids and I came back and I sat in a chair and as I sat there, all of a sudden I noticed that there was about eight kids set, sitting around me. There's another one that came over, put their arm around my shoulder, around my neck. Another one there touched me. I'm thinking, what is going on here? <laughs> what is happening to me? Well, I want to tell you, friends, there's nothing better. There's nothing better than to be standing there saying, what is happening to me? Something happened and now I know. He touched me. He touched me, hallelujah. Because something was already on the inside of me that I didn't realize. These kids started going, I said, get away from me. <laughs> As I walked, if I walked over there, these kids would grab my hand and start holding my hand. Kids were there. I'm thinking, my goodness. 
I came home from that thing. I, was, I, I didn't know what was going on. All I know is now I'm a prayer. <laughs> and I cried out to God. I said, God, what do you want me to do? <laughs> what do you want me to do? And as clear as a bell, he said, gather the children of your street. But what am I going to do with them? Tell them about me. I did not understand. I had 10 cassette tapes of children's Bible stories. I don't know where I got them from. Somebody must have gave them to our kids. We gathered some kids. So all I could do was what I'd seen and what I'd heard. So I gathered the kids and we'd play soccer. (laughs) That's the way I was taught. That's what I did. And then I'd sit them down and give them a glass of cordial and a biscuit and I'd play one of these tapes for them to listen to. And they'd listen to the tapes. And these kids, it was, was, was about six or seven weeks and we had 74 children, 75 kids at our house. I conned the boys because the girls used to beat the boys at soccer because I used to play for the girls. And I'd say to the boys, man, boys, these, these, these girls are thrashing you. Get your mates. And they get all their soccer mates. <laughs> and I'd say, okay, I'd see these blokes coming. You could see they were soccer players. I'd say, okay, you, you, and you, you play with the girls on the girls' side <laughs> with me. And we'd thrash them again. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that it was just amazing. And I thought, man. Because I, see, I, I had plans. I was going to be a builder. I was going to do this. I was going to do all these sort of things. And, and I what do you want me to do? And then, then I, I just felt the Spirit of God say, Clark is going to ask you to become his children's church pastor. I thought, that's going to be fun. <laughs> or two weeks later, Clark is sitting in the back row of all these kids. His daughters used to come. His, mother, his wife used to bring him. Bringing them. And now here he is sitting there watching what's going on. Next week he rang up and said, Neil, how about you come on and look after the kids? I went from over $1,000 a week to $150. <laughs> he was going to give me $155, but the, the elder said, No, that's too much. Give him $150. <laughs> we had six double decker buses. We had kids coming out of our ears. I don't know how many kids were there, right? It was amazing. It was awesome. One Sunday, over a hundred kids gave their lives to Christ. While we we ushered them out, mostly David and Hazel were looking after that hundred. <laughs> and then after after that, I made an altar call for those that wanted the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and another eighty children came out to get filled with the Holy Ghost. What I'm saying is this, is that the substance is inside you already. All it needs is a dose of the ghost. All it needs is to be stimulated by the power of God. It needs to be stimulated by the Word of God. Only the Word, only the truth will set you free. The truth will get inside you. It will change your life forever. If somebody doesn't do something, the floorboards are going to shout in a minute. Can I hear an amen? Amen. How many people want to get activated for the things of God? It's in you now. It's it's the Word of God. It's the anointing. It's the presence of God. Jesus loves us. Amen. People, People are searching for things that they've already got. Romans 12. Let me just read this to you. Oh. Shaka Runda Bundi. Can't find Rome. There it is. Praise God. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Because, you know, from there, ministering there, then we came up to the Sunshine Coast and started the church. I had no, I had no idea. Nancy, I heard Hazel talk the other day. She said when she married David, she married a carpenter. When, when Nancy married me, she married a carpenter. Now here we are ministering the Word of God and Man, our whole lives just totally changed. Trying to live on $150 a quid a week or whatever it was. That'll test anybody. 
But here we are today, 40 years later. I don't know how many people have been touched. I honestly don't know how many people have been touched. How do we, how do we, how do we move in this? How do, how, do, how do we get there? It says in Romans 12, 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, I beg of you, I plead with you, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If there's ever a day we need to be transformed from, from the natural into the supernatural. Natural thinking into the supernatural thinking. The natural ability has to give way to the supernatural ability. God can do amazing. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given to me, friend, I ought to tell you, God's grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is not that you can sin and do whatever you like, but His grace is that He covers a multitude of sins. And His grace, even though I was living like that, and even though I was living away in the church but not on fire, just a, just a whatever, His grace covered all that. Then He touched something on the inside of me and caused something to burst into flames. Hallelujah. His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. His grace. You will never understand. Friend, I don't believe that we can ever comprehend the power of the grace of God. I stand at times because I'm a man. I'm a natural man. I almost had a fight with the piano man. <laughs> it was last Sunday morning. He said, I'll do that. I said, you will not do that. No, you won't. Well, don't do that. I said, well, okay, don't come to one o'clock. <laughs> I was in a real state out there, I can tell you. But between there and there, the grace of God was sufficient. <laughs> It's grace. Grace. Grace is not, not a, it's preached in a, in a sloppy, sloppy way, but I tell you what, His grace is powerful. Hallelujah. Grace of God, the grace of God. I can't find where I am now. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to, but think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. You have a measure of faith on the inside of you. Friend, I want to say, how do we come? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I plead with you, I beg you that you present yourself. And friend, for me, I didn't know, I, I, I was just there, but I came under the stars and somehow or other the, the grace of God got hold of me and I presented myself my God, I just want your will for my... I don't know what I said. All I know is that His grace came down that night and glory filled my soul. Something touched me. Someone touched me, amen. And He made me whole, praise God. He had a purpose for my life. He had a plan for my life. Oh, the joy that floods my soul. I beg of you. Friend, we allow such stupid things and I feel so guilty and I feel so ashamed of my pitiful... <laughs> but some of you get mad because somebody parks his car on your <laughs> drive, whatever you call it, footpath, on your lawn. It's not even yours. You get mad because somebody beeps at you because you're asleep at the light and you didn't notice it went green. We talk, think they're blind people because we talk with our fingers at them. You know what? I got an old saying. Most of us are like the rest of us. 
I might just be being truthful. <laughs> but all oh, present yourselves and the mercy and the grace of God can get around your life. Amen. He will make something out of your life. Praise God. Praise God he made something out of your life. Oh, I can remember kids in that children's church. I can remember testimonies. We used to have testimony times. And this little kid, and this is a true story, as true as I stand here. He stood up and he said, oh, he said, Jesus saved my goldfish. He said, he what? He saved my goldfish. He said, I came out of my bedroom and, and he said, as I walked past the, the fish tank, the fish had jumped out. All is laying on the, on the floor, on the carpet. He said, I picked it up and I put it in my hand and, and I took it to Mum and I said, Mum, my fish is dead. My fish is dead. What will I do with it? She said, flush it down the toilet. I flushed my fish, honestly, down the toilet two nights before. Picks it up and he goes back to the fish tank. And he says, okay, Jesus, you can do it. <laughs> and then went and had his breakfast. And he said, when I come back from breakfast, he said, here's the fish swimming around the pond. <laughs> My poor fish was swimming around the bowl in the toilet. <laughs> I don't know where he is now. He's in the never-never. But anyway. Testimonies of kids. Oh, the, the amazing things that, they, that they've experienced and healings and, and goodness knows what. We, we had one person there that the, the, the people, the, the, we had all these teachers and they go around visiting the, the parents of the kids. And, the, and she knocked on the door and, and she said, uh, yes. And she said, look, I'm from Christian Outreach Center. I've got my, and he, she grabbed him by, the, uh, by, by, by this one and pulled him in the house. She said, come in here, come in here. She said, please tell me about what I've got to do to get saved. My daughter is driving me crazy. <laughs> They're the best little witnesses you'll ever find. Amen. Come on, there's something on the inside of us. <sighs> God wants to touch something. The testimonies of kids, people being saved, people being delivered, people being set free. Amazing. You don't have to have all your little ducks in a row. You don't have to know everything. You just got to tell people what you've seen and what you've heard. Oh, there's nothing more real. See, this mother knew that her, her daughter, there was something that had happened to them. I'm praying that those kids that go home from that camp, that there's such a change in their lives that their parents would know something's happened to them and that they'd go to church and get born again somewhere. Amen. Tell people what you've seen and what you've heard. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Work with what you've, what you've got. Work with what you, what's going on on the inside of you. Present your life to God. Can we trust Jesus with our lives? Do you think he knows best for you? I know he does. Don't let the world system build you with all its glitz and glamour. Don't build your life with wood, hay and stubble, but with gold, silver and precious stone. Everyone's work will be tested. Have your mind and purpose renewed that you may find what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is it if we gain the whole world but lose our soul? Matthew 16, 26. Humble yourself and let God be God in your life. You have a measure of faith, let Him develop or stimulate your measure. Great faith comes by hearing and hearing what the Spirit is saying. You are created by God, by faith. He spoke it. You ever think about that? Let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness. God made man. God made all the animals. They say, do you know how we got a giraffe? 
God made a horse. And he said, Adam, you make one. <laughs> but can you imagine that he made us out of mud, clay, dust? And that part was still dead. And that part, when we die, it goes back there. But there's another part. Everybody say, there's another part. And he breathed into that mud the breath of life. Now, you might be sitting there, mud. All God wants to do is breathe again and touch something on the inside that will stimulate, burst into flame, amen. Something will be birthed again. Something dynamic. I know that oh, I could have an altar call right now on people that are frustrated. You want to see more. And if you're not frustrated, you should be if you're not seeing anything. Frustration is a good thing. Amen? It'll goad you into doing something. Get, get, get going, get moving, do something. And, and it will stimulate something on the inside of you, that, that measure. Faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. You are created by faith. You are made by faith. It was a spoken word. Dare to believe what God says. Dare to experience something so dynamic. My life has been totally changed because of one thing, that God stimulated something on the inside of me that was already there. This morning, I believe that we, the church, Especially now we've got, a, got some people here, some bit of life, bit of young people there that have got a purpose and a plan on their lives that want to see uh, evangelism, want to see people saved. I want to see us, every one of us somehow or other talking to somebody. When I started, I had a bunch of chooks down in the backyard. And you know what chooks are like? if you've got a little tin of uh, wheat with you, they all come to the fence. So I had a little tin of wheat. And so I just put that there. And next to all the chooks, I got a, I got a crowd. <laughs> and I'd preach to them, <laughs> knowing that they were going to die soon. <laughs> They're all roosters. But anyway. Tell people what you've seen and heard. Tell people what Jesus has done for you. Tell, tell somebody else's testimony if you don't have one of your own. Talk about that man that, that, pray, that went to the hospital for seven years and never saw anybody saved or healed. But there came a time when one person got healed and that one person was a result. That was 100,000 at one time. There could have been multiple, multiple thousands of people that were touched. Friend, I want, I want to stir us to evangelism. I want to stir us to go out there and gossip the gospel. I want to stir us to, to for, because man, this presence of God that's in this place, it just doesn't stay here. It goes out into the community. I believe already the mighty Holy Spirit is working on people that are just waiting for you to talk to. Just waiting for you. But if we're so much on this side of the fence, and we're just thinking about me, my, and mine. I pray that we would have somewhere or other where God will get us into that place where heaven comes down and touches something on the inside of us and stimulates something. And then God will open doors. Friend, you can't push doors open. God opens doors. Can I say this? I believe this is one thing. I want to say before I close, I never, ever in my life looked for ministry. I never looked for ministry. I just said, what do you want me to do? Gather the kids. Okay, we'll do that. Next thing. Next thing, you're up here. Next thing. I never looked for one thing, but it went looking for me because something happened. It's something stimulated I pray today that we could stimulate something on the inside of you.
Could you just stand to your feet with me? You know what? I am so convinced that this church is not here just to be another church. I honestly believe that God has got a purpose and a plan for our lives. And for you to find that purpose, that plan, evangelism. If you can say this morning, while we sing this song, God, I want to be part of this great end time revival. The next move of the Spirit must be the supernatural outpouring of God's Spirit. Healings and deliverance and set free. But I want you to meditate on this a little bit, where Jesus spoke in those words in Romans about the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of his... I've delivered you out of... It wasn't Romans. Out of, been, I've delivered you out of that to bring you into a new kingdom. And I want to... I want to come over here and live in this new kingdom. Amen? I want to live in this new kingdom where there's no sickness, where there's no disease, where there's no pain, where there's victory. Heaven come down and glory fill my soul. But this a message for everybody. We've got to get it out there, friends. It's going to pray and sing. You ask God, what do you want to do in my life? What do you want for me? What can I do for you, Lord? Change your life forever. And if you want to come, stand out here, just as you sing. You can feel free to come. Let something touch you. Might be like that night I was just under the stars. But God could touch me. It'll touch you too. That's how good our God is.